praise and we honor you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Praise the Lord. My name is Richard uh, Kagwongo Wanjohi. I am born again. Um, I love the Lord for saving me and keeping me and sustaining me this far. Um, today I was thinking about um, the salvation journey and I, I, we were having a conversation in the morning and I said, just at the nick of time, God saved me and he prepared me for his work. Praise the Lord. And I'm happy to serve him and the opportunity to be here sharing his word, the opportunity to be here being ministered to. The Bible says the word of God is a two-edged sword. It cuts both ways. And uh, we thank God for this opportunity. And um, we are in the month of March. We, we are progressing well. Um, we started last week. We had the Christian Education Sunday. So we talked about, we were, we were retelling, we are remembering, we were rekindling, if I remember, if I recall well. Um, and um, so we are continuing with our annual theme, um, Let Us Go, we are going. Uh, we are saying we are not comfortable where we are as a church, as individuals, and we want to move on. We want to proceed on. And in the month of February, we talked about the famines of life. Um, and um, this, 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 this month, uh, the month of March, we are celebrating the, the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. We are in the season of Lent. We are continuing with the 40 days of prayer and fasting, uh, the David's fast. And as we do that, uh, this month we are talking about Christ, our Redeemer. Jesus Christ, our Redeemer. Uh, what is redemption? The one who somebody pays a price and we, are, we, we, we our debt is paid. So we are talking about Jesus Christ. When you think about the four lepers, um, God used the four lepers to set the Israelites free from the Assyrian captivity. And that same God, um, many years after, used Jesus Christ to set us free from the bondage of sin. Praise the Lord. And that is what we'll be talking about uh, today. Today we are talking about the bondage of sin. And sometimes when we talk about sin, when we talk about bondage of sin, um, I know inside of us, there is that feeling of, oh, is he going to speak about that sin that I'm struggling with? There is that feeling of, uh, is a preacher going to condemn me? Um, and like I say, the word of God cuts both ways. And today we want to talk about that. And um, we, 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 as, we, as, we, as, we, as we think about bondage, the bondage of sin, uh, bondage and slavery are two and the same things. And so the Bible, some versions of the Bible will talk about bondage. Other versions will talk about um, slavery. So slavery to sin means that sin controls and directs us. And a slave has no will of their own. So if you're a slave, for example, when, when we, were, we had not gotten our independence, we were being controlled, we, are under, we were under the queen, we were under the empire, the British empire. We did not have a will of our own. And we, were, we could not decide, we could not make decisions on our own. And that is the same thing. When you're a slave of someone, when you're a slave of somebody, you have no much will of your own. You have to follow their will. So when we are a slave to sin, that means sin controls us. That means whatever we want to do, we are not able to do it. And we are subject to that sin. And um, as, as, as I read, as I, read as, I, as, I, as I share this word this morning, I will reference uh, chapter 6 and chapter 7 and chapter 8 of Romans, uh, which is what Paul tries, um, uh, in the book of Romans, Paul tries to be real. Or oh, he is real. He paints a true picture of a Christian. And, 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 and I, will, I will talk about the, a Christian's journey. And uh, in chapter 6, uh, uh, verse, verse 16, he talks about um, slavery to sin. Um, verse 16, it says, Do you not know that you present yourselves to anyone as obedient slaves? If you present yourself to anyone as obedient slaves, you are slaves of that, the one whom you obey either of sin, which leads to death, or of, of obedience, which leads to righteousness. But thanks be to God that you who are once slaves to sin 
have become obedient from the heart to the standard of teaching to which you are committed. And having been set free from sin, have become slaves of righteousness. Praise the Lord. Um, the, the Bible says, you're either a slave of sin or a slave of righteousness. Praise the Lord. And I want you to ask yourself, am I a slave of sin? Am I a slave of righteousness? And that's what Paul is saying. You're either a slave of sin or a slave of righteousness. And then I will read um, verse 19 says, I am speaking in human terms because of your natural limitations. For just as you, were once, you once presented your members as slaves to impurity and to lawlessness, leading to more lawlessness, so now present your members as slaves to righteousness, leading to sanctification. Praise the Lord. And I want to speak about the three, the three stages of a Christian's uh, journey in this life. And I know they look very, you know, theological words, but maybe I will try and talk, to, talk of them in simple terms. So when, when you're in sin, when you're walking in sin, you haven't believed in Jesus Christ, but at the moment when you come to the faith, then you are justified. And we as Protestants, as, 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 as the Reformed churches of God, we believe that you are justified by faith. You only need to believe and your debt of sin is paid. Praise the Lord. So, you know, before, before the Reformation, um, the Catholic Church justified, you were justified by works. You had to give, you had to do this, you had to confess, you had to do all these things. But we as Christians, and the Presbyterian Church is a, reformed, is a member of the Reformed Churches, we believe in justification by faith. And what does justification mean? Justification means that your debt is paid. Whatever you had done prior to you becoming a Christian, prior to you accepting Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, is forgiven. The Bible says God forgives and remembers them no more. Praise the Lord. Our Lord is that faithful. So you just need to confess, I come to you, Jesus Christ. I believe in you as my Lord and my Savior. Then the journey begins. Praise the Lord. The journey of what we call sanctification. Sanctification is a process of becoming like Christ. Praise the Lord. When you get born again, you're still struggling with sins. That is why sometimes we condemn people if, if you get born again today and you're still thirsty for that bottle of beer. It is okay. It is part of the process of sanctification. Praise the Lord. You know, and I know sometimes the church we can condemn new believers. You know, you're still struggling with those sins that you used to struggle with before you got born again. It is okay. It is a journey. It is called the journey of sanctification. And we will reference that a lot because that is what uh, Paul is talking about here. Because that is what continues through your life. You will never be perfect as long as you're living in this world. Praise the Lord. And that is the reality. So we, 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 we are justified by faith, but then we, 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 we go through the process of sanctification. This is a process of becoming Christ-like. You never used to love like Christ. You start loving like Christ. You are never as nice and as kind, but slowly you get transformed. That is why I feel very sad when I find a Christian who has been in the faith for many years and they are still behaving the same way. We are not seeing any change. As you walk through the journey of faith, if this gospel does not transform you, then something is not right. Something is wrong somewhere. Praise the Lord. This gospel is a transforming gospel. Praise the Lord. It changes us. Some of us came into the faith with bitterness with unforgiveness, with struggles. But God slowly walks with us and he, for, and, and, he, and he forms us, praise the Lord. He continues molding us so that we can become like him. And this journey of sanctification, you will, we, will, we go through it through our entire life. And then, um, so that is, I think I read uh, verse 22, that it talks about um, when we continually give our members, I think it's verse 19, says, I'm speaking in human terms because of your natural limitations. For just as you, are present, you have presented your members as slaves to impurity and to lawlessness, leading to more lawlessness, so now present your members as slaves to righteousness, leading to sanctification. Praise the Lord. 
as we call, the Bible says, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. As you continue hungering and thirsting for righteousness and seeking righteousness, then you get sanctified. Then you become more Christ-like. Praise the Lord. And that is the journey of a Christian. And I will come back to that uh, when we reference Romans 7 where we read. And then um, there, is, there, is, um, there is what we call glorification. This happens when we leave earth. So in this world we live, we are freed from the bondage of sin, but we are not free from the presence of sin. So we find ourselves struggling, and I will reference that um, in, 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 in Romans 7, which is what we have read. So we struggle with sin, you, you fall today, tomorrow you think you have conquered that sin, you find yourself falling again, because we are in a journey. But one day, when we leave this earth, when our bodies are transformed, when our mortal bodies are transformed, then we shall be glorified. Romans 8.30 says, those whom he called, he also justified. Those whom he justified, he also glorified. That is glorification. And that is our dream as Christians. And when we sing that song, come to the Savior, make no delay, the chorus says, joyful, joyful will the meeting be when from sin our hearts are pure and free. Praise the Lord. Do we long for that heavenly place where we shall not struggle with sin anymore? Where we shall be free from the struggle with sin? That is glorification. Praise the Lord. That is the journey of a Christian. So you're justified. When you come to Christ, justification happens. When you confess Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. And if you're here, you haven't accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you have not started the journey. Come. Come to the Savior. Make no delay. And then Christ starts with you the journey of sanctification. He makes you Christ-like. And then one day, when we are out of this world, like those loved ones that we have been announced here have left, then they are free from sin, and they are glorified. And our bodies are transformed into other bodies that are in a world that is pure from sin. And so Paul, 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 Paul is very real in Romans 7, and he says that... Um, the law is good. But the moment the law was mentioned to him, or um, the law was um, like brought to him, then in him there were urges and desires that came. And so he says, I was dead. I was dead to sin. Until then I was told that you shall not covet. And then that aroused covetousness. Praise the Lord. You know, um, Someone says that, um, you know those places which are written, Usikojoe Hapa, that when people see that, that is where they actually feel the temptation to go and kojoa. You know, mpaka someone says now you should write kojoa Hapa. Uone, ama kojoa Hapa, nitakupa zawadi. People will not do that. Praise the Lord. You know that urge that somebody tells you, don't do this, and then there is that urge to do it. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And, 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 and I remember when I got born again 20, I think 20, what, 20, 22, 23 years ago, I, 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 loved, I loved music. I loved secular music. And um, that time, I think Shaggy was a hit. The newer generation may not know that. And, I, and, and when I got born again, the very people, the, the people that um, me, like, like worked with me or mentored me, one of the things they told me that I must stop is listening to secular music. My friend, happened to us at secular music, it was that is where I would go. I remember one time I was in high school then. We went to uh, sports something in, in a school. I think it was Isili High School back then. And, and, and you know, when you, when you had sports, there was that place where there was music and there was entertainment. And the, the attraction to that place, Panasifiwe, you know, the urge to go and listen to that music. That is when hip-hop was starting to get into Kenya. And I, was, I had actually started composing some hip-hop hip -hop songs. Praise the Lord. You know, Kalamashaka were my mentors. I had started copying them and I was making some music, some hip-hop music. But the moment somebody told me that that is not right, that I should keep off secular music, the attraction to secular music grew. Praise the Lord. Anybody feels me today? You know, the moment you are told that you shall not, looking at a woman lustfully is sinful. Then that, at that moment, your flesh arouses the, the lust and the looking at a woman. And one woman to Nazema Nikukula kwa macho. That is sinful. Praise the Lord. Yoni Hallelujah. And, and that is Paul talking about that. 
that inside of us there is what the theologians call the indwelling sin. That there is our flesh desires the sinful things. And our flesh never at any point desires the, spirit, the, the spiritual things. And that is Paul. Paul expresses his struggle. He says, it sounds like a tongue twister. He says, whatever I want to do, I do not do it. Yet what I want to do, what I want to do, I do not do. What I desire not to do, I find myself doing it. And probably that's, that's you and me. Probably you, you, you like, today I have forgiven that person. I will talk nicely. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And then the moment you get to that office or that workplace, you find yourself talking badly to that person. Praise the Lord. You know, on, on, on Tuesday, or Tuesday this week, um, we were going to serve Holy Communion with uh, Reverend Pauline. And so I had carried the elements, and um, I had to report to work first, and then at noon I left so that we can go serve Holy Communion. And um, I'm usually very nice to the security people. Actually, now I'm Vizuri Habari Yenu, Nini, 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 But then I, I, I got to... I happened to work close to ABC, so I was dropping my wife so that she can proceed on to her place of work, and um, there was a policeman, so I had to park close to some gate, and uh, those, those security guards, my friend, some of you, if you've ever been harassed by them, they came and harassed me, and that old me came up, and I looked at them, I told them, what are you doing? I told them, I told then after that, I realized, my friend, that is your old self. You should have been nice to these people. Hata kama walikupigia kelele, na unajua bado mimi ni mzee wa kanisa, Holy Ghost field, and I knew I was preaching today. Praise the Lord. But I, I found that old self, and I prayed to God to forgive me. Praise the Lord. And that is probably your struggle. You're struggling in that addiction. You really want to keep off. You're struggling, but you find yourself doing it. My dear sisters, gossip, mushene, you know, all that kind of thing. You wish you were not a gossiper. I will not be gossiping, but you find yourself doing that. Praise the Lord. Some of us are struggling with faithfulness, with money. And you're here, you're saying, I will be very faithful with money. And then you find yourself struggling. And that is the struggle that Paul went through. Praise the Lord. And I stand on this pulpit and I say, I am not perfect. And I love a song. I, 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 there's a song by some guys called Casting Crowns. And I, and, I, and I love that song. They talk about, you know, stained grass, uh, you know, glass, not grass, masquerade. You know, they talk about the way when you come to church, all of you look perfect. You know, all of you look holy, righteous, watuazuri, people that have not sinned. And the person says, and me, I am struggling with sin. And I wonder... Kwani am I the only one who struggles? And he says, okay then, I will also put up that, that face of a perfect Christian. Anybody feels me? You've been struggling with sin, but then everybody in church looks so perfect. You know, you guys look nice. Kwanza naskia your silence. You look perfect. But the reality is, he who says has no sin is lying to themselves. Praise the Lord. We struggle with sin. And if you don't feel that struggle and you're a Christian, you are probably have not recognized sinfulness or you are comfortable with that sin. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So Paul says, that what I want to do, I do not do it. Um, and, and sometimes that word has been used to, to make people look weak. It's been used like it's for the weak Christians. But Paul was an apostle. Paul was preaching the gospel, but he was still struggling. But, on the other hand, it has also been used by people to justify habitual sins. Praise the Lord. So there is a difference between a person that desires to please God and another one that just, is just careless. You're a Christian, you're just careless. You just want to continue sinning. And, 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 and I want to tell you, if you desire righteousness, if you desire Christ-likeness, God is faithful to help you. Oh, I did not finish the story. By the way, I, I got delivered from the struggle with secular music. And I don't even struggle anymore. I have no problem with that. Praise the Lord. And it is possible. And there are many things that God has delivered me from. And yet there are others that I'm still struggling. Praise the Lord. Because I am on a journey. Tell your neighbor you are on a journey. Tell them sanctification. 
This is the journey. This is the journey that we are walking through as Christians. And let's not give up. It is a fight. The Bible says, work out your salvation with fear and trembling. You know, work, work, there is no easy work. I don't know. Anybody who says any easy work, there is always a struggle in work. Work out your salvation, Christians. Brethren, let's work out our salvation. And then, um, so, 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 so that, is, that, is, um, that is where Paul was, and that is where we are as Christians. So we are free from the hold of sin, but we are not free from the presence of sin. So sin is with us. Tomorrow, as you leave this house, sin, uh, this sanctuary, sin is with you. Sin is present wherever you are. And um, so the theologians talk about um, what we call the salvation in the already. Salvation that has already happened. This is where you are already forgiven. That is where we say, I am saved. I am born again. I have been forgiven. That is the salvation in the already dimension. That has already happened. Happened. And then now there is a salvation in the not yet. That is what we hope for. The ultimate salvation, the glorification. Praise the Lord. And as we hope for that, we continue working out. We continue in the struggle. And, and Paul says, uh, when he explains that, it seems a ho like a hopeless situation. If you read that word, it sounds hopeless. It sounds like somebody that is not able to uh, deliver himself from something. Uh, and even he calls himself, how wretched I am. I know some of us have felt wretched. You have felt, you know, you're a useless Christian. I, I don't feel like I, I am Christian enough. Praise the Lord. And I want to tell you, you are still a Christian. Praise the Lord. You are born again. And, 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 and one of the things, when, when, when like that incident that happened on Tuesday, after that I remind the devil, by the way, I am born again. Now when I met Mutungaji, I told him, Mutungaji did the muho no kuroshi neroro. Praise the Lord. Because sometimes the devil wants to discourage you. And show you that you're not born again. If you confessed your faith, if you gave your life to Christ, you are born again. No matter what you're struggling with. Praise the Lord. And if you're willing to get free from that hold of sin, don't be a slave to it. I am not a slave to anger and, and that kind of talk that I talk to the security guards. I, I realized it and I confessed. Praise the Lord. If you're struggling with bitterness, don't let it be your slave. God is able to deliver you. And that is what Paul says in um, 7.25. He says, um, 25, he says, Thanks be to God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then I myself serve the law of God with my mind, but with my flesh I serve the law of sin. You know, and then chapter 8, which I love. He says, there is therefore no condemnation. Verse 1. For those who are in Christ Jesus. Praise the Lord. As I stand on this pulpit today, I do not condemn you if you're struggling with sin. And neither does Jesus condemn you. We can read that. There is therefore no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. Praise the Lord. You are not condemned in your struggle with sin. That is what Paul says. That I, I am struggling Yes, I don't do what I wish to do. But then there is hope. Christ Jesus is able to deliver me. And that is the message you want to speak this uh, Lent season, this month of March. We are talking about Christ Jesus, our Redeemer, that gives us hope. That even in our struggle with the bondage of sin, he is able to deliver us. There is power in the name of Jesus to break every chain. Are you chained? Are you bound by sin? Are you bound by addictions? Christ is able to save you. He's able to deliver you. There is hope. Tell your neighbor there is hope. Jesus died on the cross so that we might be delivered. The same way God used the four lepers, he used Jesus Christ. What do we do? Acknowledge what is sinful. Please, let's not, let's not, let's not um, you know, be complacent and accept that that is us, that is it. Acknowledge. If you're still struggling, acknowledge that you're struggling with sin. Praise the Lord. Kubali. Kama nidambi, nidambi. Accept that, that you're still struggling. And then acknowledge that you, we live in a world that is full of sin. It is possible. I, every time I wake up, the, the reason why I want to spend time with God in the morning is because I know I am going to a world that has temptations. I'm going to a workplace that where I'll be tempted. 
I did not know I would meet those security guards that would harass me on Tuesday. But we live in a world. We are not in heaven yet. We are not in heaven yet. We still have a journey to go. So acknowledge that. So it is possible. And then desire to be like Christ. You know, I know you could be struggling, but desire to be like Christ. You know, the four lepers, they were like, even in our leprosy, we will go. Praise the Lord. You know, I would, I, I'd see a people that would stand and say boldly, even in my struggle with sin, I will still go. Praise the Lord. I will still continue. And then the Bible says uh, in, 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 in Romans 6, 13 to 18, um, I know time is, oh, it's gone. Um, 13, it says, I will, let me read, I think, 13. Do not present your, mo your members, this is your body, your members to sin as instruments of unrighteousness, but present yourselves to God as those who have been brought from death to life and your members to God as instruments of righteousness. For sin will have no dominion over you since you are not under the law, but under grace. Praise the Lord. Every day, you know, there is a prayer I usually make, and I tell God, God, I want to give you lordship over my mind. I want to give you lordship over my sexuality and the expression of the same. I want to give you lordship over my thoughts, over my words, over what I hear. You know, that the Lord would be lord over your everything. Where you go, what you do, what you say, whatever it is that, that goes through you, that the Lord would be the Lord of it. And this is what Paul is says, present your members as instruments of righteousness. Praise the Lord. And sin will not have dominion over you. Then do not give up the fight. I know many Christians have given up in the fight for righteousness and holiness. This is a battle. We will, we will fight until the end. And at the end of it, then we will say, it's been a worth battle. It was worth the fight when our bodies will be glorified and we will be free from sin. The Bible says in Romans 8, 38 to 39, and that I know we love. It says, for I'm sure that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor hate, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. Not even your struggle with sin will separate you from the love of Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. Are we, do we desire righteousness? Do we desire to walk in holiness? We live in a world full of sin, but God is able to free us from that sin. And slowly by slowly, if you're struggling with 10 sins, and you've been born again for 20 years. I pray that you would be at eight. Two that are left. You know the ones Paul calls the thorn in the flesh? And even that, God is able to deliver us. Slowly by slowly, that is a journey of sanctification. And all of us are being sanctified. We are becoming like Christ. Praise the Lord. Let's pray. Dear God, we thank you. We lift up your name. We honor you. We exalt you because you are God and you are mighty. And there is none like you. We thank you because, God, you saved us. You called us into your fold, and you justified us. And, God, we are in the process of becoming like you. We thank you because of the many things and many struggles that we are going through as Christians. We want to pray that you will walk with us, and you will help us and guide us. And, God, there could be some people here that are bound in addictions, addictions to things that they may not even speak about. Men bound to addictions to pornography and sexual sin. Women bound to other addictions. Uh, young people bound to many other addictions that you're aware of. God, you're able through Jesus Christ to free us from the bondage of sin. I pray and I speak freedom right now in the name of Jesus Christ. That in our struggle with sin, God, we shall be victorious in the name of Jesus Christ. There could be someone here that was on the verge of giving up in their walk of faith. I pray that you encourage them, that, Father, they may desire to continue with the fight. They may desire to continue the journey to the glory and honor of your name. And, Lord, when it's all said and done, we shall all be victorious. And as we wait for your glorification in that appointed day, 
when Jesus Christ, we come to you. Lord, we thank you and we honor you. If I have said anything that is not pleasing to you, Lord, may I be forgiven by you. We bless your name and we honor you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Okay, so, okay, thank you.